Now turn to perhaps the slightly vexed question of the uh, judicial conduct and complaints, and the question here will be led by Nigel Don. Thank you again, convener. Um, good morning once again. The, the bill provides them, yourself as Lord President uh, that you may establish a judicial conduct scheme um, and uh, administer disciplinary sanctions. <coughs> Uh, I'm, I'm conscious that you have replied to this at, at I think, some length, and, and obviously you see that as, as a reasonable way to go. I'm wondering, could you quantify the, the current volume and nature of the complaints and outline the present arrangement to which you, you do actually handle what complaints you receive, please? I'm not sure that I'm in a position to give a quantification, and if the committee would like further information about that, then no doubt that could be provided in writing at a later date. Um, and my experience hitherto has been, of course, only in relation to complaints in relation to uh, court of session judges. I have not had any direct involvement, or indeed any, well, only very indirect involvement uh, in relation to complaints or in relation to sheriffs. These complaints have ordinarily been dealt with hitherto by the Sheriff's principal. So far as Court of Session judges are concerned, the number of complaints in that regard have been very few. There have been some, and what one ordinarily does is uh, I ask the people in my private office to vet them, first of all, to uh, analyse them. Uh, I would ordinarily, uh, in relation to a judge, uh, uh, if the was potentially some substance in it, and it wasn't obviously frivolous or vexatious, would then ask the judge in question to comment upon the particular matter, and then uh, I would uh, take a view as to whether or not uh, any course of action was appropriate uh, for me to, uh, to take. Um, I, what I haven't had hitherto uh, is a situation in which I've had a, a conflict of evidence, as it were, a conflict of fact, uh, in which that requires to be resolved. And if, if there is to be a system uh, which involves uh, formal complaints being made, I imagine that they will be necessary to set up an establishment of that kind. But hitherto, my position has been that I've formed a view, and if I've taken a view that something requires to be done, then I've dealt with it by dealing with the judge in question. Clearly, thank you, you, you clearly suggested that it's your private office that which presently uh, cuts out the vexatious and frivolous, and I, and I suspect that would be the large majority of our experience as MSPs is anything to go by of complaints. Um, uh, and simply, it comes from those who've lost the case and want somebody else to, to shout at and, and something to kick. Um, I am, however, conscious, as, as you will be, Lord President, that we, we live in an increasingly sort of open society in which people do expect to... to to see uh, our leading figures account for what they do. Now, can I be clear, I don't think there's any suggestion that you should be accounting for judgments. Uh, that is properly your, your own area. Uh, I think what's being suggested is that we need to be able to account for, <coughs> pardon me, for procedure. Uh, and, and I think that's what the, the Act is about. Now, I, I'm, I'm really trying to get to the point of whether we should, uh, whether you think we should be taking the Act as we find it and introducing a reviewer of procedure uh, with all that that will bring, including no doubt considerably larger number of complaints, or whether we should be sticking with perhaps the current system where you and your colleagues review what's going on. And therefore my question is, if we were to go that route and you were to essentially retain your current kind of system, uh, how would you see that being open to challenge on procedure? I think it's open to challenge on procedure legally anyway uh, if there was a, a decision made by the, let us say, by the Lord President, uh, which the judge complained of, let us take for example, just for example, take for example, the judge complained of, disputed, uh, then he or she would be in a position to challenge that in the Court of Session by Judicial Review. Uh, if, it were, if it was such of a, of a kind which uh, was procedure, procedurally complained of, procedurally inept, it was contended. And the same would be true, I think, of a complainant 
would be legally entitled to challenge the matter. It might be a difficult course to follow, but it would be open for such a person to do that. If I were to be allowed to take the view that a, a judge in a position you've suggested would, would no doubt know how to take it to the Court of Session by a judicial review, uh, but the average man or woman in the street would not want to go that route and would see more risks than opportunities. Is there scope for procedural review by some other institution or indeed even by ourselves whereby we could take a, a complainant's case to you, simply refer it to you and expect to reply? Well, I, there, there certainly have been occasions, I believe, in the past, in which members of Parliament, including members of the Scottish Parliament, have on behalf of constituents and made representations to the uh, Lord President. And I suppose that it would be possible for uh, these representations to be made in relation to the matter of procedure, as well as to the merits of the original matter and complained of. So uh, I don't see that there will be any need for any... Uh, uh, parliamentary, uh, for any legislative structure for that state of affairs. I think that possibility exists as at present. So, am I entitled to conclude that you are not in favour of the judicial, sorry, the judicial re uh, complaints reviewer as envisaged by the Act? I, th I think it's unnecessary. I think, um, again, it's a question of confidence and trust. But I think one can uh, reasonably suppose that uh, if uh, the matter is dealt with uh, in accordance with the rules which uh, I envisage laying, laying down in relation to any structure at all, um, and if it, indeed if one doesn't have any rules as such uh, uh, laid down the legislation or subordinate legislation, but is dealt with presently as it is at the moment, that um, we will have a situation in which we can cope with the matter adequately. Could I just then establish, because uh, it's not clear to me whether you would envisage setting down a code of conduct, clearly the act says that you may, I mean, do, do you see that as something you would feel obliged to do? There are, are steps in place uh, at the moment through uh, a body which I, I did, took the initiative in setting up called the Judicial Council for Scotland, which embraces judges at all levels, from the, uh, indeed from our Lord of Appeal and Ordinary, down to the uh, Justice of the Peace. And one of the items that it's presently working on is the matter of a code of judicial guidance. Um, I think guidance is probably the right word, because what one is endeavouring to do is to give assistance and encouragement to perform in particular ways. It's not a, a penal code of misconduct, as it were. Uh, so it's not setting down prescriptively what you must not do it's encouraging you to do certain things or suggesting that you do uh, certain things. But so I would hope that that would become available and would uh, be made use of throughout the judiciary in Scotland in the early course. I have to say that I personally am very happy to hear you taking the, the carrot rather than the stick approach because I do think it's a good way to run the country. Um, I am slightly concerned, however, that there are people out there who want a stick with which to beat you and us and anybody else, uh, and therefore it won't satisfy everybody. <laughs>